What's up and what's happening, TPE fam? We're back with some people I just cannot get enough of. Um, you guys have seen him, these guys, these two uh, on our channel pretty frequently. Uh, I look at them as our power financial couple, um, the people in my life that I know that are really moving and shaking when, as it relates to uh, making advances to having a wealth mindset in their marriage. Um, I just admire the way these two just hold each other in such high esteem um, and they appreciate each other and it shows each and every time they get in front of the camera. I'm talking about none other than uh, Jared and Alexis from Marriage, Money, and Mindset. Good evening. How are you guys doing? What's up, guys? Hey, doing good, doing, doing good. Doing good. Doing good, good, good. So before we go too much further, I want to make sure I get this uh, stamped in here real good. Um, you guys have been seeing content from these two, and I want to uh, just encourage you guys to like, share, and subscribe the content to the content that you guys are seeing. Where can we find you guys on uh, YouTube and on Instagram? You can find us at Marriage, Money, and Mindset, all one word. You know, fresh content weekly uh, in long form. So they, they're, they're putting out, they're putting out, you guys put out an episode once a week. Can we get some, some commentary on that? When, what time, where can they expect? Yes, every Monday at 5 p.m. We have an episode that is um, recorded and dropped. And then in between, we're uploading shorts for everybody to easily digest. <laughs> yep. So whatever, whatever your whatever your uh, palate prefers, long form, short. I mean, just tap in if you can. Um, I'm sure they would appreciate it. The channel would appreciate it. And more importantly, the more we interact and engage with that content, the more people will get a chance to help. Um, I think we're doing this as a, as a means to help people. This is not a self-serving thing for us, I think, at the core of it. I mean, I think it's an act of expression. However, the ultimate goal is to help people. So uh, I think you guys are doing that. So if, like, share, and subscribe to Marriage, Money, and Mindset on YouTube if you hadn't done so already. All right. But today we're going to be talking talking about something that I know JP has uh, has hinted at uh, in several episodes that we've had together and as uh, independently. And I'm sure they've explained this concept on their channel. So if you want a deeper dive on some of these topics that we're going to talk about, um, please make sure you connect with the episode that they, 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 they spoke with this on. But we're going to be talking about criteria due diligence um delegating their portfolio and just and some other things and so i i would just encourage you guys can y'all just jump off and uh, give us an, uh, like an introduction of what you know what we're gonna be canvassing today and what can we expect okay so today we are going to hit it off with real estate investing so i know last time we talked about the stock market investing in the stock market Today, we wanted to touch on real estate investing. So it's just another vehicle of investing. Okay. So, so all right. So let's talk about real estate investing. And so I, I, as if you guys have been following this story, you guys have got to have at least uh, came to the conclusion that that these two are involved in what they're talking about. So, you know, they're, I think they're well versed in this level of, of business and this level of uh, financial management and financial growth. So let's talk about where do we begin in, in real estate investing? Yeah. So, you know, uh, for anybody who is interested in wanting to invest in real estate and use that as a vehicle, you definitely first need to start with, you know, criteria, right? Um, understand exactly what it is you want to invest in as far as what type of real estate investing you're attempting to do. Uh, you know, there's residential, there's commercial, you know, um, there's uh, capital gains, there's cash flow you know, uh, multifamily. So there's so many avenues that you can select. And, um, you know, there's no right or wrong way of doing it. It's just, you know, for every individual is unique. You decide on what type of real estate you want to invest in. Um, and we, when we say invest in real estate, not necessarily where you stay, you know, it can be a quote unquote investment. Um, but if we're talking about, you know, generating revenue and income from that asset, uh, that's completely different from where you live because you pay for where you live, right? An asset that pays you is, you know, what we invest in. Money flowing in, right. not 
going out. Yeah. You know, so uh, you definitely want to know your criteria, guys. Like for us, okay, you know, um, single families is where we started. We have some multifamilies. And, um, you know, when we started our journey, we sat down and decided, hey, what type of real estate do we want? As far as like, you know, the demographics, you know, what neighborhoods, bathroom, bathroom ratio, garage, you know, things of that nature. The type of foundation, right. if we want to yeah. be um, close by amenities or like highways, right. certain school districts, that's all a part of your criteria. Right. And that's just the structure of it. Um, you know, as far as another thing to take in consideration is what state are you in? What city are you in? You know, are you want to invest in the state and city you live in? Mm -hmm. uh, is it a landlord friendly state or city you live in? You know, things to state taxes. Yeah, state taxes. You know, that's something to think about. Because at the end of the day, you know, you want a cash flow. Mm -hmm. It's no, you know, if you're going to do uh, rental real estate, you have to cash flow. You don't want to break even. You know, you don't want to supplement it. You want a positive cash flow. You know, so positive cash flow is, you know, that bottom line, it's a positive income, not a negative income, right? You know, so, I mean, it's so many, you know, ways like that you can go in this uh, particular vehicle. So, um, yeah, guys, just know what your criteria is. Then, you know, that's just a few ideas that you can kind of start with, in my opinion. So I guess just to to add, uh, I guess, a question for me, are you are you guys as criteria list? Is that absolute or is there a percentage that you of that list that you want to try to attempt to hit? Yeah, I mean, we'll compromise. Let's see. I know very seldomly like if it just really depends. Like I know on one particular unit, it didn't meet our bathroom criteria, but um, like we typically yeah. look for three bed, two bath, um, two car garage, like he mentioned before. Mm -hmm. So a couple of our properties aren't two full baths, but it's like the two sinks, like the Jack and Jill. Right. So we got the two sinks in two separate areas, um, but it's one tub and toilet. Yeah. But to answer your question, for the most, you know, I mean, yeah, it definitely has to meet at least, I would say, 90 to 95% of what it is we're looking for right. in a particular property. You know, if it's one bathroom and that's it, nah. I'm a pass, you know, because that just, I mean, again, there's a market for that, but your your tenant pool is a lot smaller. So, you know, your turnover, uh, getting it turned back over potentially may take that much longer because, you know, most people Maybe probably would prefer mm -hmm. at least two baths or at one and a half at minimum. Right. So, yeah. So what would you, uh, how would you advise someone who, and I say advice, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. How would you, I guess, steer someone in the direction that's trying to start off? Like what would be some preliminary criteria? I, I would imagine you guys, this criteria has like matured over like the years, but you know, what, what is, what is a basic, uh, criteria for someone who's looking to get into real estate investing? Well, you know, first of all, you definitely want to be educated to a certain degree, you have to have some, some, some wisdom going into this. I know for me, it took me a while. I was reading books and, you know, uh, watching content online just to get a, a, a understanding of exactly what type of real estate investing I was wanting to, you know, endeavor into. So, you, you know, you definitely need some education, uh, or a mentor. And then of course, you know, you're going to need some capital, you know, uh, that's definitely, you know, now where you get your capital from, that's a whole nother conversation, right? Um, I started with none of my own income, you know, so if you want to talk about that, we can. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, there's, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you want to have some capital. Um, and, you, and you also need, I'll tell you something that's, that's, uh, that you need. It's not tangible. It's courage. You need some courage. You know, that's something that, you know, uh, you know, you can have all the things you could have. I know people that have the education, they have the capital, they have the credit score, they have the LLC, <laughs> but they lack the courage when it's time to sign that dotted line. 
you know, so yeah, <laughs> that's some of the things, some of the, you know, that's something that we never really, t- I, don't, I don't think we touched on. We talked on like, you know, the, you know, the fundamentals of it, you right. know, that's what we got going on back here behind us too. But, you know, the intelligence and the, uh, you know, the things you can't see, you know, that courage, something you definitely need. So, so can you, can you elaborate a little bit on that? You know, like how did you, you know, when you going into your first deal, where did you, where did you draw that courage from? You know, what was the, you know, what, what, what steered you into a place to where so I'm ready to leap out there? What, what was that? What was that for you? Man, it, it's just thinking like, you know, where, cause the deal is, I feel like it just fell in my lap too. I wasn't, I didn't wake up that morning knowing I was going to find a real estate deal. I mean, I was always, you know, in the market looking at the time, you know, but it just kind of fell into my lap that day when I was, uh, you know, at, on, at actually at work. Um, but for me, you know, um, I guess my education, you know, what I knew. And uh, there were some things I didn't know going into it, you know, as far as like the actual process you know, a uh, guy with an agent, like learning exactly like, you know, the earnest Sense. deposit, the option, the contract, the due diligence. It was a lot of that. I was kind of the unknown, but, you know, doing it once gave me that much more confidence for the next round. And then, of course, after doing it a few times, it was just like second nature now. But, but was, yeah, that's what I was going to hit on yeah. um, as far as having or getting analysis paralysis, like doing all this research and Mm -hmm. you're just learning and learning. And something that a lot of people say is, I'm gonna do it whenever I learn all about it. But really the action has learning within it. So like he said, he did his due diligence first, but, um, and I keep saying he, because he did his first deal right before we met. So um, it was something that he did on his own. And then I hopped on board whenever we did meet and started dating. But anyways, um, just having that education and then putting some action behind it, you're going to learn along the way. Yeah, that's and that's another thing. I'm still learning, man, even this far down the road. You know, I'm always trying to figure out a better way of doing whatever, you know, like having a stronger reserves, you know, just whatever, you know, just literally. even even to even even today, literally today, you know, we're, before we got on this call with you, we were talking about, you know, uh, going forward, things we're going to, you know, adjust. So it never ends. The learning never ends. Once you start, you know, you're going to continue to learn. You're going to remain a student in this game mm-hmm. for the most part. It's always like, you know, it's levels. Right. It's a lot to learn. And uh you know, if you're the type of person who isn't going to want to stick with this, you know, I mean, you can still invest in real estate by not doing it the way we do it, but you don't get all the benefits from my understanding. Like you can buy a REIT, a real estate investment trust, but it's not really investing in real estate. You don't get all the benefits of actually owning the real estate. Yeah. Yourself. There's several different niches um, in real estate investing. Yeah. So, I mean, you can flip, you can wholesale, you can buy and hold. Like he said, you can get into the real estate market in the stocks, which is the REITs. REITs. Um, Several different things that you could do. Commercial real estate, residential real estate. um, Yeah. The land. I mean, there's different plays. So I I guess, you know, y'all said a bunch uh, there. Um, I, I, y'all answered several, several questions at once, but I think one of the things that stand out to me is the, you know, I like to call it the reps, you know, you, you can get the, you know, that, that, that analysis paralysis, and that can really stifle you because you're attempting to be perfect. That's something that you, there's no way you're going to be able to allocate enough time to learn everything about it without actually getting the experience. You know, um, I think you know, just if, if there's nothing and, and this is applicable not only to real estate, but this is applicable to, you know, whatever your desire or passion is. It's like, look, it, it, I've been talking about doing this 
for since 2015 and i just just started doing it because i was uh, I, you know you 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 have the imposter syndrome you have the you don't have the courage to say the lack for lack of better words and um like having that courage and just jumping out there and doing it you learn so much and you just evolve and get better you know i feel like even just in the last six to eight weeks i've been challenged to be better like i feel like you know my delivery is getting better like the more you do it the more you talk the more you you know you, you're constantly refining and you're constantly getting educated and you're constantly so i love that i mean i love that you guys brought that up for sure because i, I think it, the, the great ones or, or not even the great ones the, the best of us who are who are accomplishing the goals that we want it requires that we put the t that we actually put our hands to the plow and continue to learn and have that kind that, that kaizen mindset of continuous improvement so uh man that that I, I love that um so let's jump into some of the things that you guys got on the board i, I know i heard uh due diligence and I wanted to kind of just unpack that kind of what does that mean? Um, you know, how do you guys go about executing that? You know, what are the protocols that you guys have in place for that? And just, you know, y'all can just work through uh, the board back there because it looks interesting. I've been I've been staring at it as y'all have been talking. So I want to, you know, let, let's 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 uh, break it down and unpack it. Yeah. So I'm going to let her do this board, but I'll explain like the initial due diligence in most of the case, most of the cases is, um, you know, you I'm referring to kind of knowing your numbers. That's what she's going to explain. But also, you know, um, getting an inspector mm -hmm. to uh, inspect the property that you're interested in. Usually when you sign a contract, there's a due diligence um, uh, time frame within that contract. And th if things didn't check out, of course, you know, that you can you know, that'd be grounds to terminate the contract. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like in the beginning stages of, you know, your due diligence is getting it inspected. It's going to cost, you know, it depends on your, uh, you know, your um, square footage. Your, yeah, exactly. You know, the company, what they charge. Um, it's not too expensive, but again, you know, it's something to consider. You know, you may think you have the right property, you get an inspector in there. And then of course, you know, something doesn't pan out. That, that's actually happened with us. We've had properties inspected and didn't work out. <laughs> Remember that one? And, yes. Yeah, it was one. The one and, I said no to. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you know, there's properties. I mean, we spent money and invested some in some money into it and it didn't pan out, but that's part of the that's part of the game. So, you know, be prepared to lose some money in an inspection sometimes. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah. And then the option, you know, we lost the option, you know, hundred dollars, you know, so just like I say, those are some things to consider, but then of course the numbers. So it's not a deal if the numbers don't work and I'm gonna let her take over on that part. Okay. I'm gonna scooch over so y'all can see. <laughs> okay. So basically, um, like you said, it's not a deal unless the numbers work out. So you have to know how to calculate the cash on cash return, which is what I'm gonna break down on this board, I'll bring it close. That's a little better. Move this one. Yeah. Okay. So I made up a property. It's called um, 717 Main Lane and it's listed for $100,000. So this is the four part um, breakdown on how to calculate the cash on cash return to a property. It's basically how hard your money is working for you or what's your return on investment. So the first category is income and your rent is your income. So for this property, we're going to be making a thousand dollars a month in rent. Your expenses associated is your mortgage, which is $565 a month. These are just example numbers. Your taxes are $66 a month. Insurance, also $66 a month. And your property management fees, if you decide to have a property management, is usually 10% of the rent. So it's $100 a month. And then category three is cash flow. So cash flow is your income minus your expenses, and that gives you your cash flow. So the cash flow um, is $203 a month. And then 
we need to calculate the cash on cash return because I mean, it's $203 a month. Is that a deal? Is it not a deal? You don't really know if you stop here at three. So um, you have to do your down payment plus your closing costs. The down payment I calculated at 15%. The closing costs I calculated at 5%, which is usually too high, but just for simplicity, 15 and five, that's 20% of the listing price so it's 20 per i mean uh twenty thousand dollars okay and then your annual cash flow so you just take the 203 dollars a month times 12 to get a year and you get 2436 okay so then you're going to take your annual cash flow divided by your all-in costs which is the twenty thousand dollars and you get, um, well, you actually get the 0 0.1218 times 10, and then you get the 12.18%. So really, that's still up to the person to decide if that's a good deal for them or not. So is 12% a good um, return for you? I mean, it's definitely more than your money will be making in the bank. So... Usually we try to make at least 10% on our um, real estate deals. So for us, this will be a good deal. And this is in the perfect world too. Right. You know, I mean, these numbers, man, probably not even going to work in today's environment, just being honest. But we just wanted to give something, you got something tangible, of course, you know, just to get an idea of how you can break down that formula. It's just a formula. You know, and then it's, it's definitely a lot we left out in that formula, by the way. Because, um, you know, honestly, like the mortgage, you don't have to do, right? Your income minus your expenses is technically your NOI, which is net operating income. And then, of course, your debt comes after the NOI. Okay. So that's something that you don't have to do because you could go 100%. Like, let's just say you have $100,000, right? You don't have to do this. True. Now, of course, your return isn't going to be 12% either, right? When you break the mat down, it's going to be a less return. The return is actually going to be less. But that's the power of leverage. That's what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. You can do this five times if you have 100000 Oh, that's a, yeah. No, that's... that's um, I think that's incredible. Like, and I'm sure I think you guys have um, more content around this concept. So where you guys go deeper into what this is. And so I want to encourage the listeners, man, if that, <laughs> say what? I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, it's said, not out yet. It's coming yeah. soon. That's yeah. yeah. We haven't announced it yet, but it's coming soon. That's we, okay. we just been on real estate. I mean, I'm sorry. We've been on stocks lately. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's a reason why. We haven't tapped into talking about real estate yet, but it's coming soon. <laughs> well, well, maybe by the time this comes, we're going to have uh, content flowing on that. It's coming. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, but in any event, this is very valuable. Um, this is a very tangible, direct, deliberate way to calculate um, what your, what your uh, rate of return. And frankly, 12.8% 12 12 is, is, is extremely good, like very good, you know, um, as long as you have all the criteria to be able to leverage, um, you know, the, that, that part, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to mention, I mean, real quick, it, man, that's just one spinning plate to doing it, right? Like, I, li I like to use that analogy, like with real estate investing, you're spinning a lot of plates. Like, there's many ways you're making income just off of one deal, Right. So you're making income and monthly income, right? You're making future cash flow by the tenant paying down that principal, right? You're getting tax breaks because you get to write off a, p a percentage of that structure, which is called depreciation, right? And then the property is also appreciating in value, which is, you know, just a natural appreciation that comes with owning real estate you know it usually goes up annually too so that's also future income that you can tap into mm -hmm. and depending on how you structure your deal 
this could be an infinite return. Like his first property. Yeah, like exactly. My very first deal is end up being an infinite return. So when you say infinite return, it it sounds pretty obvious to me what that means. But mm-hmm. maybe that I might be I might be not clear on it. What is an infinite return for the listeners? So it's basically when you have zero in the deal, right? Okay, so how could you purchase this type of deal? Well, obviously, the obvious first way you would come up with purchasing it would be to just save up the income, right? You would just earn the income yourself from exchanging your time for money until you have enough for the down payment. Well, that's dollars you exchanged. It took you X amount of time to, you know, exchange time for that money. So you could, you know, the problem with doing that though, you know, that deal may not be here by the time you have it saved, right? That's one, that's one problem. But let's say you have equity in the, your primary residence, or let's say you have a stock portfolio that has margin that you can borrow against. Well, you can get that money. You can access it now. That's your capital. Yeah, it's going to cost, but guess what? You have cash flow that could potentially cover that, that interest that it's going to cost. So if, you're, if your down payment is coming from a source where you borrowed the money, of course, we're talking about, like we mentioned before, it has to be on sale. You know, the money has to be affordable. All right. So your down payment can actually be a form of debt as well. And by doing that, you now have an infinite return. You have no money in the deal. It's 100 percent finance. Yep. OK, so. that's 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 pretty fly. I mean, and yeah, no, that that's I mean, that, that don't sound like that happens too often. Or can you or do you? They don't. That's education. <laughs> That's education. You know, yeah. uh, I knew I had a, I had an idea of where I was going to access some capital when I was getting started, and so uh, you know, once it was time to execute, that's all I needed is just, just that cur- that courage at that point because I had the wisdom, I had the capital, and now I just needed that that courage. You know, wow. so but okay. yeah, you know, as you yeah. I mean, we're going to talk more about it on our channel, of course, but <laughs> just just to, just to give you guys an example of, you know, an infinite return, that would be an infinite return where you don't have any money in the deal. And uh, the, the project or the uh, uh, deal just pays you. Basically, it's called an infinite return where you have no money in the deal. Mm-hmm. So if you hadn't already um, and uh, well, hadn't considered this already, please make sure after you get done listening to this, Go over to Marriage, Money, and Mindset and subscribe. Because if you're interested in any of the things that you're hearing so far, this is just what it sounds like, just like the tip of the iceberg. They're going to really unpack this concept. I might have been asking too many questions. But uh, they're really going to unpack this this concept on their channel in detail. So I encourage you to go over there and do that. Okay, last thing I got on our list today is when we're talking about delegating you you guys' portfolio. Um, you know, just speak to, you know, what, what does it mean to delegate your portfolio? What, what portfolio are you talking about? Uh, just for the listeners out there that don't have any context, you know, break it down for us. Okay. So delegating for us is important because we don't have certain tasks that we want to execute on ourselves. It's um, a job. Yeah, it can be looked at as a job, right? We got into wanting to invest in real estate to literally be investors, not be a quote unquote landlord, which is the term that, you know, most people that actually go and knock on the door to collect their rents are called, you know, landlords, people that are actively doing the job of a property manager. So that's one form of delegation that we utilize as a property manager here in town. Um, And it's still a, it's still a, job that you still have to do because you you do have to manage the manager right uh i've been doing a lot of that lately (laughs) with our management company uh simply because we have some you know turnovers going on usually i don't talk to them this much but just keeping them in line keeping them in check you know um making sure they're doing the job that i pay them to do that can be you know something you got to manage but Versus me actually getting the crew together, hiring the crew, giving them access to the unit. You know, it's still a job. I mean, you 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 know, delegate as much as you can. Um, you could even have your lender 
if you're going to finance your property, you know, you could delegate your taxes and insurance to them, too. Uh, if you choose to do that, like a commercial loan, you can actually request to not have your escrow uh, or you can have it escrowed. You know, it completely is it's completely up to that investor. Some lenders, by the way, I know the lender we utilize um, for a couple of our properties, we don't escrow. Uh, and, that's, and that's a personal preference of ours. Uh, but yeah, you know, those are a couple forms of delegation. It's just an option that you have. If you're the type of individual, you know, you got a DIY, no DIY. <laughs> You got to do it yourself. You know, you want to cut the grass. You want to knock on the door. You want to scrub the toilet. Hey, have toilet at room. it. Yeah. Have at it. You know, uh, we got into it to be passive income. So yeah, as much as possible. Yeah. Right? As I mean, much it, passive yeah. that we can get. That's what we choose to do because we value our time and more than anything. And it's going to cost guys. Look, hey, man. If you don't like the, if you don't like how much you're spending to delegate, then just go go get you a couple more of those, you know. Because I mean, yeah, I get it. You know, you're looking at this bottom line. I'm oh, 203 bucks. I don't have you know any money to, you know, delegate. Or well, you know, it would have been 302, yeah. 303 without the management fee. But still, man, like just go get more doors. You know, you want to focus on growing the business, not working in the business and i think i think to add to that is if you if you set your uh criteria up right that you should be able to generate enough income to yield the the delegation fee you know i think if you maybe if you're going there without the proper the proper criteria to to give the proper yield go ahead i'm sorry uh well i was just going to mention so at the very least, guys, what you should consider doing, if, you, if you're if you going to do it all yourself, still calculate that property management fee. That way you have it figured in there just in case you decide, I don't want to do this anymore myself. I want to delegate. Because it's better to know what that number still looks like versus not knowing what, that num- what, it, what the number looks like without it. Because you may consider later on down your journey, okay, now I want to delegate, right? That's all I was going to mention. Uh, so you still want to factor it with or without property management. And, and, and usually property management, you know, is uh, on average 10% of your gross income. Um, you know, you can negotiate it if you got a management company. Like, you know, I know I recently negotiated ours down a couple points. So, but on average, it's 10% of your gross income. So just factor it in. It wouldn't hurt. That would be my advice. So. No, for sure. I mean, it just that it, it makes sense. Um, you know, especially at scale, they, you know, just to have a team to be able to scale up. You know, if you're so hands on, that's only so much you can do. It becomes a full time gig at that point. Right. Once you right. get to right. a few doors, I would imagine. So, man, no, I appreciate you guys' time and wisdom tonight. Every every time I, I and look, I wanted to say this on the beginning. You're going to have to listen back through this and next time take some notes, to, uh, TPE fam, because there are so many gems dropped. Uh, you guys explained a bunch of uh, concepts on here that I think we're not even thinking about as a as a as a group at large. And so um, I appreciate you guys always being transparent. I, I appreciate you guys being thorough, uh, I think, to say the least. You know, I, I think that um, I, I think that you guys are about the things that you talk about. I appreciate the fact that you guys are actually doing the work. Um, hey, listeners, again, I'm going to say this. I'm going to kick it to them this time. Where can they follow you? Where can they catch up with you guys? You guys can follow us at Marriage, Money, and Mindset on Instagram and on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe. Every Monday, 5 p.m. Central Time, catch us on the video. That's what's yeah. up, man. And hey, TPE family, if uh, if nothing else, just subscribe to the channel, man. We we appreciate support. I want to support uh, these guys. These guys have been incredible uh, uh, during their time with TPE. Um, I appreciate uh, them pouring into you guys as much as they have. Um, and until next time, people, peace. Peace.